Hey everyone, welcome welcome to another episode of Unbox Live. It's been a while that we've gone live, and next to me, of course, is Nate Beck. Nate, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. This is going to be a good one because we just got done smoking a $500 cigar from Davidoff. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. We even dressed up. We put on our suits and ties and, uh, you know, enjoyed a $500 cigar. Was it worth it? Um, for the price, I would say, if you have the money, great. If not, let's go ahead and dive into these other really great cigars that are less than 20 bucks because there's a lot here, Nate. There are a lot of choices. <laughs> I tried to limit this to five, but boy, it got out of hand real quick. <laughs> so we got a lot on the table. I'm sure you can kind of see that, but I just want to give everyone here an opportunity yeah, to see there are some really great cigars. In fact, some of these are less than 10 bucks mm -hmm. a piece. So um, really good stuff. I'm actually smoking two cigars at the same time right now. I'm smoking Room 101's 12th anniversary. I'm smoking the 2001 which is the 12th, and then I'm smoking the 2020, which is the 11th. So I wanted to see what they were like back to back. The uh, the blend is completely undisclosed. It just says everything Nicaragua. So I have no idea what I'm smoking, but I'm enjoying it. So that's good. Um, other than that, what are you smoking, Nate? Uh, I am finishing a Placencia uh, Reserve Original. Uh, I, I hate to describe it this way because it's not entry level, but this would be sort of the least costly of the Placencia line of cigars. Uh, fantastic morning smoke, white and gold label, um, like Placencia's. You'll see bands at the foot. We can see it up here. I don't know if Matt wants to switch over. This is one of my cigars. You can see the Placencia's will have band around the foot uh, and then the double band up here towards the top. But uh, this is another of my line. I'm a huge fan of Placencia cigars, so I tend to gravitate towards these quite a bit. Yeah. Talk about that. This one, the uh... Alma del Campo. Yeah. All right. So this, I would say over the last, oh, maybe two to three years, this has historically been the cigar that when I want to smoke a really nice little bit spendier cigar, but really have a treat kind of like we talked about in smoking those uh, Oro Blancos. My special occasions are often weekdays when I just want, <laughs> just want to enjoy something really good. I think in Minnesota, this particular cigar is about, oh, $17, $18, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, around the United States, you can get this for, you know, anywhere from 2 to 3 to $4 less, uh, maybe more depending on the taxes on the particular region that you're in. It's nutty i get a little bit of floral aroma from this cigar especially in the first inch uh the construction is absolutely spectacular the burn is fantastic i have a little uh trick that i learned from my buddy rick baker at tobacco grove here in the twin cities and whenever i cut the head of the cigar i'm a kind of a devoted uh straight cut uh, aficionado. Once I cut that cigar, I have a habit of tapping the end of my cigar on my watch or on the table just to get those little extra bits of dust and debris yeah. out. And this is one of those cigars that's rolled so almost perfectly. I barely get any yeah. residue that comes out. It's that. just great cigar. I really like the feel of this wrapper as you're smoking it. It's um, a little bit oily, uh, super smooth. I just really, really enjoy this cigar. So this is one of my all-time favorite treat cigars yeah and this is what i'm smoking these two right here the whoa. i can get you there thanks uh-huh so yeah the uh room 101 12th anniversary and 11th anniversary i mean they're limited edition i mean some of them the 12th anniversary doesn't disclose how many but the 11 says only twenty thousand. so um take it for what it is but is they're total cigars yeah 20, total and cigars. i think msrp on them is like oh let me double check half wheels got it coming in at 10 bucks for the 11th and 11 dollars for the 12th so i mean we're talking really great sticks for not that much money in yeah. my opinion definitely not 500 bucks so that's great um next on my list and it has to be on pretty much everybody's list if it's not you need to smoke more cigars and it's, it's Padron. <laughs> so, uh, here, throw that up. Yep. Um, I put up both of these, um, the Padron on the, that's not in the 
two basically is the Maduro Exclusivo. That's like my go-to stick. I pretty much try to always have a box of those on at all times. Um, it's it's just a constant. It's twelve seventy for that size. It's a five and a half by sixty, or sorry, by fifty ring gauge, sixty. Yeah, right. Um, and then this natural, this Presidente natural. I mean, obviously, if you guys are paying attention, this just hit uh, number one cigar of the year in the torpedo format. But it's it's the same blend, so it's, it's was it the, the natural. natural that hit the cigar yeah, of the year? Yeah, 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 it was the natural. I'm a bigger fan of the Maduro, but the natural is great as well. I mean, yeah. they're both great. So, and I think this one retails for sixteen dollars and ninety cents. So, and this is like a really good presentation. So whenever I'm looking at like celebratory sticks, yep. I, I also look at like the presentation. Like I typically don't buy tubos for myself. I don't either. But if I'm going to give somebody like a celebratory stick or like, Hey, congratulations on whatever, this is kind of a nice way to do it, you know, cause it's, it feels rich. It feels uh, like a gift. It feels like something special that you you got me. Um, I was just going to use that word special. Yeah, it's, it's just, got great presentation. It's a beautiful container. Right. It just has that kind of. I hate to say it, like, ooh, look at me, but it, it just it does. It's just a great presentation. It feels of, fancy. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, less than twenty bucks, Padron, nineteen sixty four yep. anniversary. If you haven't smoked it, please do us all a favor and smoke one. Yeah. <laughs> They're amazing. They're delicious. So uh, what, what else is on your list over here? I have a couple that were, I started smoking these, uh, one sort of, boy, I probably tried it sometime after PCA. I got it maybe in some sort of, um, uh, sampler or someone had given me one. Uh, this would probably be my first, like number one or two cigars from 2021. This is the, patina connecticut it's got this great blast of cinnamon nuttiness kind of baking spice um, it's got a real subtle dried fruit sweetness to it that i just think is fantastic uh this blend was done at i was just looking at it yesterday casa favili uh in nicaragua never heard mo molly uh, no, shout out who's to Mo. based out of Chicago. Mo, these are fantastic. Keep making Dude. these cigars. Great this cigars. cigar is great. Uh, I believe, let me look at the price here. I believe this cigar is $10.50. Um, His whole line is no, $9.95. So depending on where you buy it, it might be $11. It might be $9. Right. Uh, this is a great cigar. And I'm a big, big fan of the band. Just the general presentation of this. Great design. Great cigar. Uh, the next cigar was one that was kind of a end of the year sleeper hit, the crown heads. There's nothing really distinct about the packaging on this, apart from that brown silk wrap on the uh, foot of the cigar. This is the crown heads La Patissier. Uh, it's named or it's made in the same vein as their Carême, the crown heads Carême, yep. which I believe is named after a French baker. Uh, hmm. Madame Carême, Connecticut Broadleaf, which I'm a big, big fan of. Mm. Love getting mm -hmm. my hands on great Connecticut Broadleaf cigars. Chocolatey, uh, almost a little bit bready. Really is something that'd go great with a, a nice croissant or a, a mm. pan au chocolat in the morning. This is a great cigar, the La Patissier. Nate, with all the uh, French words, sounds <laughs> so elegant. Just speak Bo French to me and I'll be bougie. good. It's so good. On that same vein, oui, oui. with Crown Heads, Las Calaveras, that's this year's. Um, I also like the green one, which I think is 2019. Sure. Um, but it changes every year. So I really enjoyed this year's uh, Crown Heads, uh, Las Calaveras. It, it was just amazing. and Great size, too. I can't remember the price point on that, but I think it's like right around 10 bucks. I, I think um, you're right. Yeah. It's ridiculously affordable, yeah. ridiculously good, and a great, again, like, you know, a celebratory stick. Sometimes I do look for things that are a little bit more limited. Um, I think that kind of goes along with celebratory, but obviously to each their own, right? I mean, celebratory might just be smoking another Romeo and Julieta for you. I mean, right. I don't care. They're great sticks. For some people, having a cigar in and of itself is celebratory. Exactly. Regardless of what you're smoking. Exactly. 
for me, the uh, the other thing that I really enjoyed this past year, I got to interview the guys over at uh, Big Sky from Montana, and they ended up giving me this cigar, the Bitterroot. Um, I really like that cigar, and I think it came out. The Bitterroot was kind of like uh, it came out right around the 15, but I think it's less now. I think it's, I, I, I'll have to look it up. Um, it was really, really good. Rob I, sleuthing the big sky bitter root. Yeah. I totally forgot the price point on this, but I was actually kind of shocked really to good find cigar. out what the price is now. Beautiful construction. I think it went down in price. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, a 10 pack for, yeah, 80 90 bucks for a 10 pack so it's nine dollars cigar yep i don't know and you can get a five pack for 55 so again it's like that ten dollar price range and it's phenomenal yep. great cigar yep. great cigar um this one i think could easily cross over into my list because i'm a huge oh, fan yeah. of these. so next up the hvc 10th anniversary one of the bonuses of getting to attend tobacco trade shows is you often get to try cigars before they are released to the general public or like at the very beginning of when they're going to start hitting the market and was able to smoke one of these cigars handed to me by Rainier Lorenzo, who is the owner of HVC. And Rainier is one of the best human beings that I've met in uh, recent memory. Fantastic cigars. This uh, HVC 10th anniversary is a really, really nice cigar. And what is that one coming in, Rob? 15 at? bucks. 15 bucks. It's a beautiful cigar. And I'm just bummed, like a lot of these companies, because of FDA, had to like not disclose what type of wrapper. It just says Nicaragua, Nicaragua, Nicaragua. That's kind of a bummer for me. But regardless, yeah. if it tastes good, I'm smoking it. So yep. doesn't, I guess it doesn't <laughs> much matter what it's made out of eh, to an extent. Right. right? Um, so, and then Aurora, which I always pronounce his name wrong, the, the first 20, uh, 20 years. So this is a must have in my humidor at all times. I got to have one of these. They're, they're just, it's one of those things that I crave every once in a while. And I go, oh yeah, this is a first 20. And uh, wow, what is the price point on that? I, I think it's super cheap. Um, I'll have to find this one. I have not had this cigar yet. Let's see. It's a really, really good stick. Christian's dad, the story behind this is I, I believe Christian's dad gifted him the wrapper leaf okay. on this for celebrating his 20th year in the tobacco industry. Okay. And so he made this and it was just phenomenal. Like just absolutely hands down one of those cigars that beautiful again, presentation again. Yeah. It just looks like a special occasion presentation. Yeah. I like the paper on it. I like the, again, the, just the whole, that. the whole aesthetic. Um, Half Wheel's got the just Diamante really on it. And, and the Diamante is not a box press. It's, it's a round cigar, traditional Cuban style um, shape. And that's coming at 18. So these are going to be a lot less than that. So still under 20 bucks. Just amazing. Rob, I'm going to light up this patina because it's delicious. Go for it. And so La Galera as well. Um, La Galera, these two, if you don't mind. Yeah, not those. at all. You bet. La Galera is, if, if you have not heard of La Galera, Hochi Blanco, who runs Tabacalera de Palma, is he makes a ton of cigars. He's a huge farmer in the DR. He's got tons of land. And these two sticks, the, the green labeled one is the 80th. And the, bra the black labeled one is the 1936. They're both different, but they're absolutely amazing. The 1936 is a box press. They're both both box press, but it's a uh, Ecuadorian Habano wrapper that I absolutely love. Uh, you can just see the the kind of like the the sh the shading on that wrapper is kind of moldy, not moldy like mold, but like uh, modeled. Modeled. Thank mm -hmm. you. That's what I'm looking for, modeled. And mm -hmm. it's just phenomenal. And that cigar is like literally, I don't know, 10 bucks. Uh, you can get a box of 21 for $190. It does have Actually really less, beautiful 170. coloration to it. Oh, it's just phenomenal. And the 80th, that came out in, in a limited edition. 
box, which I ended up buying because the box looked like a mold. Like it had the like little rings where you would, you know, press the cigar for the mold to get the shape. And it's a phenomenal stick. It's a Mexican San Andreas wrapper. It's phenomenal. I love it. And again, at that $10 price point, these Lagaleras, every Lagalera is underpriced. No matter what it is, it's it's basically because Ho Chi has a ton of tobacco that he can play with. And it just is, is what it is. So he doesn't, I don't want to say he doesn't have to mark it up or anything like that because he's definitely got to make his money back. But for some odd reason, there's something about Lagalera that they're really good six and they're not that expensive. And I absolutely love it. So secret tip, go find some Lagaleras, try them. I guarantee you they're probably going to be a staple. Even their Connecticut from their regular line, mm -hmm. not these like specialty cigars. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. And just a classic look to the band. The band is so ornate. It's there's so, so much Let's going can... on in that band. There, There's just a high level of, again, when I'm looking for a celebratory stick, when I'm looking to give somebody a nice gift, I want them to feel that specialty that I... I personally picked this out for you to have and enjoy and aesthetic goes into that. It does need to taste good, but I also like the packaging mm -hmm. to go with it because it's a gift. Mm -hmm. So, or for myself, I like the packaging to go with it because I'm like, yeah, it's a nice stick. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean all packaging means it's a nice stick. Okay. So I'm not saying that, but it's it, like when people buy wine. Yeah. It's nice when in the cooler, the band, the label, the, you know, the more likely you are to buy that. Bottle. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, a couple more. I think Diamond Crown is always on there. Mm -hmm. Diamond Crown, um, just the regular line, like the the Connecticut or the um, the Natural, is great. But the Diamond Crown Maximus is more of a full bodied. I got the number four right here. Um, the number four comes in. I think it's like fifteen bucks, and it was just it's just an amazing cigar, you guys. And again, that band is great. You can usually get these in like three count sampler packs. Um, that make great gifts and again, a great celebratory stick. I got two left. All right. If, if you guys are exhausted, we can take a break. If anyone needs a break. <laughs> um, next is Carolina blue. Oops. Excuse Oops, me. Sorry. Uh, Carolina blue limitada. I got to smoke this while interviewing, um, him on box press. It was a phenomenal cigar. The one thing I love about him and what he tries to do in the blending is he wants the cigar to have like multiple flavors coming at you as you smoke it. So as it changes, as, as you get through the first third and the second third, and you could say that, you know, most blenders want that, but some don't, you know, some want consistency the whole mm -hmm. way through. I really like when a specialty or, or a celebratory stick does do this a little bit of a flavor ride mm -hmm. on my palate. And, and, Carolina Blue Limitadas are great for that. I believe these are coming in right around 18 bucks. And I think to piggyback on our what we started off this broadcast with, the Oro Blanco $500 cigar, you know, is it worth it? Maybe, maybe not. Is it fun? Yes. But the flavors were exceptional. Oh, they were. And they had, what, at least three or four distinct flavor changes as Easily. we smoked each hundred dollar inch of that cigar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All the way down to past the band. And Absolutely. we're talking, these were, these are great cigars. All of these can be smoked past the band. Mm -hmm. All of them have great construction. All of them have great flavor. The last but not least is this, uh, Miestra de Saca, which this one is the Nakatamale, mm -hmm. which I have, I was so intrigued by this story because, and again, call it marketing kind of BS. It's very interesting. This cigar, Steve Saka, the blender, sought out this process of, you know, blenders nowadays have a ton of different types of tobaccos that they can mix and match and create different flavors. Mm -hmm. But what he wanted to do was he wanted to go back and say, Back in the day, usually you would go to a field and you would get your wrapper and your filler all from that same field or same region. And that's what he did here. He's he's getting this out of three different regions, if I can find it. 
Um, I believe it's Yamastran and uh, Halapa. Let's see, the filler tobacco coming from the same farm, in this case, one in Jalapa, Nicaragua. So this is really interesting. It's an Pardon Ecuadorian me. Habano wrapper, and I find it just interesting that it's all coming out of the same kind of location, if that's the truth behind this. I find that very interesting to, to smoke that. So if you like to kind of geek out about what the, the blender's doing and sit down and try to pull that apart and say, what am I really tasting here? Or do I really like uh, tobacco that's coming out of Jalapa? Then here's your opportunity. So, and I think the price point on this. What do we have there, Rob? Fifteen ninety five. Yeah. Boxes of seven. Extremely interesting. And it's very similar to uh, single origin or yes. single farm coffees. Right. Uh, single vineyard or like small plots and vineyards, especially when it comes to wines or champagne. Right. You'll get these really interesting flavors um, in spirits. It would be a single barrel rather than a small batch. It'd be a single barrel bourbon or rye. You might not get some of the balance and nuance that you'd get from a small batch where you can blend and really work on minimizing some off flavors and really getting kind of a consistent flavor profile. But the uniqueness in that single blend or from this single farm is you really see what that showcases or that one barrel showcases that one piece of ground. Yes. Uh, what did, go ahead, pull up a question here. My go-to is the Monte Cristo white label and Macanudo gold label. Also, the 1964 is also one. Absolutely. Great cigars. Yep. Matt, there's one up there, DEPM 23, right up towards the, there you go. I'm getting married in May. Congratulations. Yeah. What's something special and that you should recommend I should smoke? The Padron. If, yeah. If you haven't smoked a Padron. Get a Padron. Get the natural if you don't smoke a ton. This one right here. Because Padron is uh, on the more heavy full side. Um, if you don't like full flavored cigars, then I would go towards, um, diamond crown, the, what's the one that I'm thinking of the natural, right? The diamond, the crown. diamond crown, Connecticut. Yeah. The diamond uh -huh. crown, Connecticut. It's like yep. smoking butter. Yes. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Yep. And if you can't get that, if you can get Davidoff, Davidoffs are also great. Um, I'd smoke this one all day long. This patina. Yeah. You can find that this is a great Patina. cigar and it's really affordable, but smokes. And the nice thing about that is like, if you're going to smoke with other guys that may not smoke a lot because you're, you're doing the celebratory thing for your wedding, mm -hmm. that's what I did as I, I got cigars for my wedding and for the groomsmen and stuff like that. And we smoked cigars before the, uh, before the event, before the wedding. And I was smoking Padrones, but you can smoke something like a Patina and everyone can enjoy it. And, and it's, it's so good. And it's kind of nice if you want to minimize seeing dozens of half smoked cigars later on, because you're still going to probably see that. Buy something closer towards a Robusto or a double Robusto or a Corona, right. because it's much more approachable size wise. It doesn't take nearly as long. And you could have a second cigar if you really love smoking cigars. Right. Or if you don't want to, you know, attack smoking a cigar of this size, you know, almost more like Churchill, even though this isn't a Churchill, this is a long smoking cigar. This is a couple hours. If you're not a seasoned cigar smoker, you're going to probably smoke about inch or two of this, then you're going to set it down. So a little smaller cigar, something like this, you know, size of this Las Calaveras, this would be a great size to have for your wedding for those that may not be everyday cigar smokers. Absolutely. One more comment from the bottom, Chicago, I didn't catch the name. Chicago Murillo. Keep going down. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe not. He just says it. I, I still have, yeah, what did you say here? I still have that one, Sokka, dot, 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 dot. Yeah. I'm yeah. guessing he's a fan. Yes, Sokka's good. Well, I also, we also have some FAQs that have come in, so I would love to try to answer some of these questions because a lot of them have come up about 
humidor seasoning and humidor maintenance. And we're in that season right now, at least in Minnesota, where we have sometimes problems with their humidors. And I'd love to just answer some of these questions. They've come in from you guys, either on the show or elsewhere. And I think they just deserve some attention. Really great questions here. So let's hit it. Let's get into a segment we just call FAQs. to navigate um, whatever you got going on. So let's get into it. First one, um, hey, I used three packs of the 84s for two weeks in my 68 count humidor. I'm the, sorry, I measured the packs before. So what he's saying is he weighed them. And what he found out is that the humidor absorbed 37 grams. Is that enough for seasoning? That, you know, he says there's still 50 to 51, 54 grams left. Um, maybe it won't absorb anymore, but he wants to know, did he do a good job seasoning for 14 days? The answer is yes. And it's a great question because we kind of, in our studies, we took really cheap humidors and really good humidors. And we said, what's going to get us, what product is going to get us to seasoning the cell structure of the wood. And if you guys don't know what's going on, there's a great video I have. Um, if you type in humidor starter kit on our website, you'll be able to see it. And it's literally just the cell structure of the wood is like a Nalgene bottle. It has, it's empty, let's say, or partly filled. We don't know where it starts, but ultimately what we're trying to do is over that two week period, we're trying to fill this Nalgene bottle up. In the wipe down method, you only distribute about two grams of water, whereas typically a humidor might take 90 grams. In this case, his took 37 grams. It all varies based on the wood, but that's why we designed the 84s because what we want to do is we want everyone to have success. So the question of did my humidor get enough is yes. As long as you're having great success with your maintenance packs and your relative humidity is right where you want it, that means you basically quench the thirst mm -hmm. of the humidor wood and it's no longer taking moisture from your maintenance packs wood does literally look like a sponge if you were to look yes. at the cell structure of wood there are all these open spaces i always imagine i remember when i was a kid like church sunday school we'd get those little vanilla wafer like the wafer cookies yes. that were like little rectangles you come in like strawberry and chocolate and vanilla it's kind of open structure like that. And you're basically filling those open cells with moisture so that you're not pulling that from your cigars. Absolutely. Let's hit the next one. Um, I think I messed up. I'm halfway through my seasoning. First humidor. He did the wipe down method with water and propylene glycol. That's the first mistake right there, but it's okay. Um, it, and by the way, it doesn't prevent mold. He says the propylene glycol doesn't prevent mold, by the way. So I think that's a misconception we all think, but sure. it's not true. So if you have 100% relative humidity, which is water, mold growth can happen. Heck, it can even happen with 80 or 60. It mm -hmm. just depends. But he said he wants to use the 84s, but can it be done? And he's a little bit worried about maybe the propylene glycol being like the residue, of the propylene glycol being on the wood. Now we've never tested this, but what I can say is what you might want to do is wipe down your humidor with a alcohol base. So just take regular alcohol, put it on a, a rag, and you might want to wipe down your humidor from that perspective. Just, just very to get, lightly. Yeah, yeah, just to get any propylene glycol off. But ultimately, I'm not even worried about that because what's going to end up happening is when you season with the 84s, it's a slow uptake for the wood. You can totally do that. What you're not going to want to do is mix. You don't want to do the propylene glycol and the 84 because the 84 will absorb all the moisture out of that mixture and then just basically not put it into the wood. Correct. So you can start over. You don't have to worry about it. What I would do is I would start over with just the 84s. Make sure you're using the right amount of 84s. For it, you need for every 200 cubic inches or for every 25 cigars the humidor holds, you need one size 60 and you're good to go. Yep. So no issues there. Great question. 
You can redo seasoning. I redo seasoning on a yearly basis. Uh, just as things change, I just make sure the humidor has enough moisture in it. Or if the relative humidity drops below 60, I reseason. Take the cigars out, reseason, go back. Put the cigars back in, put the 72s or 69s in, and I'm good yep. to go. Yep. All right. Does a large acrylic humidor, the one with the cedar inserts, require seasoning? No. We tested it. It doesn't require seasoning. It's a thin amount of cedar. If you're not getting performance, you can, but ultimately you're going to be just fine. We've tested yep. it. It lasts. Um, it, it, it does just fine because that airtight humidor, there's no moisture leaking out. So it's easily able to basically saturate that wood slowly, just the way you would want in a regular seasoning process. Yep. It creates that equilibrium so quickly that it doesn't really make any difference. Exactly. This is a great question. He's got a cheap uh, desktop glass humidor. He's using 75s in it. And it's sitting right around 60 to 64% relative humidity. So the 69 Bovida would not work either. But when I use the 84, he says 85s, but it's 84% Bovida, it sits at 69. Yes, my humidor was seasoned with the 84s for two weeks. Should I just keep my 84 packs in there? He says 85, but it's just a typo, I think, or yep. just not knowing the relative humidity that we have. So in this situation, this is such a great question. We get this all the time. One, I would double check that you're using the right amount of Bovida for seasoning. Again, if you need to take length with height of the external uh, environment, or sorry, the external mo measurements, of the humidor, plug it into cubic calculator, just Google cubic calculator, plug in the inches, and it should spit out how many cubic inches that is. For every 200 cubic inches, you're gonna need one size 60. I've noticed that a, some of these manufacturers are not necessarily lying, but they're off on how many cubic inches or how many cigars it holds. That's one area that I would say, make sure you correct that variable and then reseason if you feel like you didn't do it enough, if you didn't do it right the first time, but something is taking the moisture out. And what I would say is you're, you got to get to the point where you're not using the 84s because it can be detrimental to your cigars if something changes. Like right now you're, you're getting, you know, 69, which right. is, might be where you want to be. But if something changes, it could shoot up above 72 and you could have exploding cigars, cracking wrappers and all that stuff. So I would reseason possibly. And if, if you feel like you did seasoning right, then I would take the 75s and I would double the amount of 75s I use in there. Because for whatever reason, something's going, something's taking the moisture. It's either the wood, the humidor is leaking the moisture or the cigars you put in there are dry. And that can happen too. So I always tell people, take your cigars out, put them in a Tupperware container, a Ziploc bag, yep. put some 69s in there, and then let it sit for 48 hours with the hygrometer in there and see where it sits. Yep. Because the, the, the humidor is going to tell you if it's leaking moisture or not. And if it, if it comes up and it, with the 75s and it sits at 69, you know your humidor is good and you don't need to reseason. But if it's low, then you know, okay, the humidor is leaking. It's either leaking or the, the, the wood is dry and it's taking moisture. I need to reseason. If you don't have that happen, then your cigars are dry. And what you'll want to do is acclimate them inside that bag with 69s before you put them in the humidor. That's what I do. I don't ever yep. put anything in my humidor that doesn't, doesn't sit at 60 and Go ahead, Nate. I'm going to grab a product that I've yep. promoted a ton, but it, it's super helpful. When it might be worthwhile for this particular question as well, while we're thinking about potentially reseasoning the humidor or conditioning his cigars or her cigars, it might be really worthwhile to calibrate the hygrometer that they're using. Absolutely. Because I totally that about could that. be... It Any, could be lying to you. It could be lying to you. It could be as much as 5 to 7% off. Yeah. You're going to want to calibrate that. And you can calibrate it with your 75s. Put it in a Tupperware container. Take the 75 pack that you have. Yep. Throw it in there. 24 hours. What is it reading? Yep. Then just note that. And that might be the area that you're having a problem with. This has happened to Bespoke Unit Paul. 
he had a humidor and he thought he was low, low, low. He recalibrated. He was like, holy cow, I was overfeeding mm -hmm. my humidor with too much moisture. My cigars were actually kind of spongy and flavorless because they were too wet. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, is if you're, if you're going to go with the method that I talked about, this Here, product from Humidimeter is just the Cigar Medics made this product. It's absolutely phenomenal. It reads the moisture content of the cigar and then it spits out the relative humidity. So for me, I take a cigar, I go ahead and throw it in the top. I like to, yeah, and then turn it on. And once it kind of, it'll bobble around a little bit. And then once it kind of settles, I know exactly right where it's at. Yeah, 68. That's that's a little high, which is fine because sure it it might be that. Yep. But then if we took like a different cigar, let's see if I have a different cigar that might be a little bit different. Yep. Throw that one on there. Each cigar is obviously different. So you have this range. As long as I'm in 60 to like 62 is kind of like my low end. 60 to 62. If anything's lower than that. So this one's even a little bit humid. If right. It is, yeah. Right. So for me, let's this is where foot. try this one. We'll get a little bit less, 67 down in the foot, a little bit more in the cap. And let's so try this Padron. I love this tool because it then tells me, where is this cigar at? What does it need? So this one's at least up in the cap, if we can see that. 71. 71. So, And then we can test in the foot. And we are sitting at... 67 67 66 and the reason you're getting a difference is because the foot is a little bit looser than the cap yep so i use that tool all the time to make sure hey if i put this cigar in my humidor to rest for a couple weeks before mm -hmm. i smoke it is it is it basically going to rob moisture from the rest of the environment so yep uh, hopefully that helps did we have one more question i have a 72 percent packs in my humidor um, I have an extra 69 pack for my travel humidor. Can I toss a 69 in my humidor um, beside the 72s? The answer is no. It's always no. And I'll tell you why. The Bovida is the, the, the lower RH level. So the 69 is going to start absorbing moisture from the 72s. Bovida puts moisture into the air and then the cigars and the rest of the environment pulls it out. What happens is the Bovida that's lower, the 69 in this case, the 72s are giving off moisture and the 69 goes, ooh, there's too much moisture. Mm -hmm. I like to be at 69. So it starts absorbing. What can end up happening is that that can overpower how fast the moisture is absorbed into the pack, the Bovida pack, and not into the cigars. Mm -hmm. So you kind of get this negative effect to the cigars because the Bovida might pick it up quicker because it's supposed to be quick enough to adjust to threats and temperature. That's what Bovida was engineered to do. So never mix RH levels. It's not a good idea. You're better off putting that either in a Tupperware container or keeping it in the travel humidor and just letting it sit there. Yep. Just let it sit there. It'll If it's a good travel humidor, it'll keep it good for about six months to nine months. And yep. when you go to travel, you'll just throw your cigars in there and check the pack, make sure it's still squishy and you're on your way. Yeah. You don't ever need to take Bovida packs and throw them into your humidor, uh, your wood humidor, when the RH is different, it'll just cause problems. Yep. Yeah, it's a great, great point, Rob. Great questions, guys. Appreciate all the questions. I hope that was somewhat helpful. This has been hopefully a good uh, representation of great cigars, celebratory sticks for less than 20 bucks. None of this $500 crap because, you know, <laughs> we're not, we're not paying it. No, just kidding. We're not daddy war books over here. No. Uh, let's see. We got, do we have another question that come? Richard said, I have a boba to humidor bags, two medium. After eight weeks, the packs are dry and with 10 cigars in each. Is this due to the cigars just trying to get the right humidity? It might be. That's a great question. Um, so if you have a hygrometer, what you can do um, is obviously, or if you have this cigar medic tool, I, I highly recommend that you just get one of these. This will pay for itself. I've, you know, I don't know how else to say it, but I've, I've used this so much that I can't believe that it's only 30 bucks. Um, that way you would be able to kind of know where your cigar started out at and then if they increased. So Richard, I think it's a great tool for you. If you're just trying to decipher whether or not it's the 
bova to bag itself leaking moisture or the cigars you could take all the cigars out put them in a different bag and then put your hygrometer and the bova to packs in that bova to humidor bag and after 24 hours it should acclimate to the the number or two to three points from the number on the pack so like 69 percent. throw it in there it should be right around 69 percent after um and and make sure it's a calibrated hygrometer by the way yep um and then you're good if if you don't want to do that, and like I said, you want to know where your cigars are at when you come in. If you're buying cigars online, it's very typical that they're coming in pretty, they're not super dry, but most of the star cigars I get are at 60 or lower. Mm -hmm. And so therefore they need that time to acclimate. So what's happening is the Boveda is giving the moisture probably to your cigars. And that's a good thing. Yeah, that's where you want them at. But you know, two weeks is kind of fast. So I just double check yep. what's going on. Um, and those are the two ways to check it. Empty humidor bag with a calibrated hygrometer will get you an idea of what the bag's doing. Uh, the cigar medic tool, the humidimeter will get you an idea of what's going on with the cigars. It's a really slick tool. It's, I use it's a must that, have. I use the one that you gave me all the time. It, it, I don't know how we, you know, anytime a tool or something comes out, I'm like, eh, well, well, why do you need that? That's ridiculous. This tool definitely not that actually nice. works. I'm like, yep. uh, how did I do this before? I literally, before this tool came out, I would literally just sit on cigars for a month inside a Boveda humidor bag with the Boveda and just sit on them and wait and mm -hmm. let them acclimate. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what was yep. going on. Yep. So shout out to Cigar Medics, guys. Appreciate you. Um, they got some cool things coming that we're going to get on the show. Uh, you guys, you, just fun tools. We all love fun tools. They got more coming. They're right. innovators over right. there. Right. Should we do that question there by uh, Kyle? Your cigar of the year. Kyle, oh man, dude. right. That's that's so that's so not fair. We smoke that's too many cigars, Rob. Such not a fair question right now. I don't know. Oh. Uh, we already did a video of. What we thought our top 10 cigars were right. of 2021. 20, okay, mm -hmm. it's 2022. Okay, yeah. good. Um, so go back and watch that video. You can see what we recommended. Uh, I think we were trying to like see what would be on CA, Cigar Aficionados right. um, top 25. There's one on there that we knew would be on there. And really? I think the two two out of the top oh. 10, we kind of are, are almost always in there. Uh, Pedro. Oliva, Siri V. Milano. Yeah number eight or seven something like that sure, and then padron yeah they're always this, in there to me it doesn't matter those companies are just producing great cigars no matter what yep. so i mean it's always going to be they're in the there because they're making great sticks they're I mean, just they are they're just, just good quality so um my top 25 I, I i you know my number one cigar of the year go go back and watch that video i got i got a lot mm -hmm. it's just it's too hard to pick one, man. We almost have to sort of get more towards like 10 because we just smoke too many cigars. It's not, it's not fair. Right. It's all mood based. Uh -huh. It's all, you know. Yep. And I think that's what happens. Like once you get more exposure to cigars, you just, you kind of like, oh yeah, you uh -huh. know, like I'm, I could really go for a Padron right now. Right. And then, oh no, you know, I really, you know, I, I was digging that Las Calaveras uh, this year's blend. I think I want to smoke that. I don't know. It's too hard. Yeah, there was one for me that was just this uh, sleeper hit, the Crown Heads Juarez. Right. That cigar is fantastic. I think I went through three 50-count boxes <laughs> of the shots, the four by 50. And and a good portion of them went essentially to charity here in the Boveda offices. Yeah, well. Nate, can I grab a cigar? Yeah, grab one of those Juarez. It's great. You got to have that moocher stick. Everybody loved it. Know? It was just a great cigar. Or it is a great cigar. It's a phenomenal cigar. I love smoking that cigar. Yeah. We'll have to do a video on like value sticks. I think we did one. Did we? I don't know. We'll have to do another one. They always change. Mm -hmm. So appreciate you guys. What do we got another question here? Oliva Siri V. Bellicoso. Partigas number four. That's yeah. Great. Great sticks, Richard. Yep. Love it. Of course, Davidoff is on that, the late hour, Kyle says. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We appreciate you always tuning in. Uh, send us your questions. As you can see, we're going to have a reoccurring segment every uh, Unbox Live. We're going to do some you know, frequently asked questions, try to help you guys out. Just get a little bit closer to enjoying your cigar, 
and using Bovida because it just works. It just, it just works. And Couldn't that's be easier. it. And I, I don't know how to make it any easier. Nope. So cheers. Have a great Friday. Thank you all for joining us. Cheers guys.